Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dadex and today we're going to take the Kaldari Teclon Cruiser, the Caracal, out for a spin. And this is one that I just found lurking in my hangar here in Losec, which I've quickly refitted from having ham launchers on it. Because I found a 3 out of 10, a Sapentis Narcotics Warehouse right here on my probe scanner, didn't need to scan it down. So I'm going to kind of run it quick. I don't want to waste time reshipping or anything like that. I'm going to find modules to make this the perfect fit for a 3 out of 10. And besides, we're in low sec and that comes first. So we're going to go with rapid light missile launchers. And I'm going to just use regular Scourge ammo on this run because I found heaps of it. I sent the Amigas some to turn into Navy ammo. Let's burn through this because it's cheap and it does the job. Does it do the job? We'll see. In the mid slots, we've gone for a passive tank, traditional kind of caracal tank two large shield extender twos a multi-spectrum shield hardener two to boost up our shield resistances a micro warp drive so we can control range don't need to use it very much so cap stability isn't an issue i've got a compact fitted today purely because i need that for the hand fit i'd recommend a restrained if you can fit it. i've chosen a target painter we'll talk about that when we're on the site but basically it's going to apply to one target and that target will then be easier to hit for our weapons the drones and any friends weapons that might be involved in the low slots we've got a damage control 2 boosting all of our resistances across the board and a trio of ballistic control system 2s increasing the damage and rate and fire of the missile launchers i'm not worried about the stacking penalty the third one still gives me more dps and there's nothing more i need than more dps on my caracal right now in the rig slots we've got two tech one shield extenders just giving us more shield hit points and there's a tech two em shield reinforcer again it's plugging that em hole for life here in low sec if you're in high sec only fighting serpentis a thermal reinforcer may make more sense for you basically as i said this is a low sec fit if i see a caracal i'm likely to chuck em damage at it if i can we also have a couple of hornets in the drone bay hornet twos and that all comes to about 35 million maybe a little bit more realistically actually at the shop the most expensive module on the fit is the tech 2 em shield reinforcer so you can use a tech 1 em shield reinforcer if you're coming into low sec and save yourself about 5 million Luckily, I've got an old Indy Alt who builds them out of junk and stuff the Alphas find on their travel. So that's cool. Saves us a fortune. So this all comes to 35 mil and that is not much more than the Navy issue Cormorant. And I took the Navy issue Cormorant into Null Sec to run an escalation. It did well, but I thought I'd give the Caracal a go about the same price. I think it'll probably do it in about the same amount of time. Now, if you're new to rapid light missile launchers or any kind of rapid launcher, you may have heard they have an excruciatingly long reload of 30 seconds and it's horrible and just stick with the regular ones for PVE. I don't think I've used regular missile launchers on a cruiser for about 10 years. With these launchers and regular Scourge ammo, we are going to get a very respectable 44 kilometer range and DPS of 275 it is about the right kind of number I'm looking for to minimize the management required on those light launchers. Although about 35 of that DPS is actually coming from the two little Hornets. So we're getting about 240 from the launchers, but I think that'll be fine. With Kaldari Navy ammo, we get better application and we get 10% more damage. But they're so expensive. Do we really need to use them on this site? No, we don't. Of course, feel free to use them if you're feeling flush. I'll leave that down to you. We'll simulate the fit. We'll see we get 32,645 EHP which is going to be more than enough for this site. But this isn't built for this site. It's built to survive low sec. If we put in some of the high damage Fury ammo, Tech 2 ammo, it reduces our range to 33 kilometers, but our DPS goes up about 100 to 372. But they're not going to apply very well to the frigates on this site. And this site is nearly all frigates. So we don't really need those apart from that building. And that's just to burn it down quicker and get to the loot. You don't need to break a tank or anything like that. Precision is an option, but again, Tech 2 ammo is more expensive than Tech 1 ammo. And let's just see how the Tech 1 ammo regularly the scourge light missiles interact with the rapid light missiles and these racks. I've got a few odds and sods in the cargo hold there from when it's fit with ham launchers because it needs more power grid but we'll leave them there so I don't bury them in the hangar and uh, I think we're ready to go. So here we are we've undocked we're gonna head up to the site and as I said I found this literally just on the probe scan window it's not an escalation I didn't need to scan it down 
just arranging my modules up to the top row so I can hot key them with the F keys, which you'll see me using because they'll get displayed on the screen as we run through the site. Now, because this site is so visible, we have to be aware that somebody could already be up there or somebody else could know where it is. So we'll get the D scan going. If we see anybody within one AU when we're at the gate, then uh, we know there's definitely somebody in the site. There's nobody around that I can see. Could be cloaked ships, of course. You could just have a ship decloak on you when you arrive up here, because somebody might be lurking at the entrance, but that's very rare. But we're here, we're in, and so long as we keep a close eye on that D scan and scan regularly at close range, we will not get caught by any hunters. Because now they've got to come through gates to get to us, they have to decloak to do that. So it gives us an opportunity to pick them up on the D scan. So just keep D scanning and if you see anything dodgy on your D scanner, have a think about it. Right, I'm gonna zoom out. It's important you do this on sites, at least till you know in your head what they look like. I'm over here, all of the rats are over there by the structure. So I'm just gonna fly in a kind of tacking way, zigzag my way towards them. Now I've double clicked on the missile launchers, fired one salvo and they one shotted that frigate. If I hadn't manually switched the launcher straight back off, it would have fired a second salvo and therefore wasted a whole salvo of missiles because the target was destroyed whilst they were on their way to it. Now, with regular light missile launchers and in other sites even with the Rapids, you might want to split your launchers up and be really, really efficient with your missiles. You can, we can see there two missiles and probably one shot one of these frigates, although there are different frigates on the site problem is we're in low sec our priority is not getting caught the site isn't really going to be a problem we want to be able to descan, especially if you're not too experienced in low sec your focus needs to be on not getting hunted and not getting caught the site will take care of itself so i think you're actually going to end up with so much management especially if you're inexperienced the more you use rapid launchers the more used to their rhythm you will become and you play around it basically but here, I think I'm just going to have them all grouped, happily one shot a frigate with each salvo. I'm using the cheapest ammo you can get, so there's no expense really. But this is the easiest way to stop those missiles being launched at a target that's going to be dead by the time they get there. And overall, I think it's going to be the easiest way to minimise the number of reloads you're going to have to do. So let's see how it actually works out. I've got the drones out now to add their valuable 30, 35 DPS. And we'll set the drones onto one frigate and then we'll shoot at another one with the missile launchers. The target painter, if you put that on a target, we should get better application off the missiles, but we don't really need it with these ones by the look of it. We'll keep a bit of an eye on it. If we do see any rats getting hit by the salvo and left with a little bit of health points, probably an indication that a little bit more application would help. An alternative to the target painter for running this site would definitely be a missile guidance computer with a missile precision script. But uh, I'd, I had the target painter handy, it's what I use generally in low sec. Especially when I've got the hams fitted to it, which I did before we switched it for this site. So there we are. A Weber can be handy if the rats are getting in close on you, but they won't because we're in charge of the range. So uh, that's not really much help here. There are also other alternatives in the fit, you know, rig-wise, etc., for more damage from your missiles, more application from your missiles. But it looks like we've taken down the last rat in this first room with the last missile in the launcher. So we hit our reload just as we go into the next room. But uh, the first couple of times you run a site till you're comfortable, you really want some spare tank. And we've got plenty of that, as you will see. And here in low sec, where I could run into trouble in the form of a, a fellow player, at any moment, then I'm not skimping on the tank. The priority, as I said, is the fact that we're in low sec, not the Serpentis rats. So really, if you were running these out in high sec, you could probably manage it with much less shield. You wouldn't have to worry about the EM holding your resistances because nothing's going to do EM damage to you. So you've got options to adjust the balance between tank and DPS, which is what you should be looking to do as you develop your fit to your style. And of course, the task at hand, especially if you've got lower skills, so you're getting lower DPS figures anyway. This is an alpha, but it's, it's trained to the max really for this run as an alpha can be, which isn't really much different from how trained an Amiga can be, apart from all those little secondary background skills that do make a difference, but not significantly to this. Anyway, I'm now in the second room and uh, we have a choice of rooms to come into. I've gone for the security corridor. So if anyone's coming into this site hunting you, they, they have to 
they have to pick which gate to look for you in there so there's another hindrance to being hunted they're still on your d-scan the whole time they're doing this what was a little odd to those of you that know this site is that i didn't pick up the keys from the traffic control container by the gates i got distracted by a phone call i actually thought you couldn't go through the gates without the keys from the storage container um there can be loot in there though it's incredibly rare so i'm not scared that i've missed any loot and i might have a look later but uh, yeah, I didn't pick up the keys and I got through the gate anyway. So that was nice. So we're doing exactly the same thing here. Controlling the range, moving our way in, taking down the rats. One missile salvo at a time. F1, F1. You don't want to waste those missiles in flight. I'm going to speed up the footage now just as we grind our way through this site because that's basically all we're doing. But just remember, and you'll realise once you've run two or three of these sites, you are in complete control. It's all about range management. Just get them inside range of your weapons, but outside the range of theirs. The worst thing you can do on one of these sites is to fly straight towards the structures in the middle where all the rats can mob you. Piled on DPS of all those little rats will hurt you. If you know what you're doing and you want to go in and get close and uh, shoot them from close range, then yeah, that's a valid technique. But uh, that's one you need to plan for fit your ship for and fly for but in general you just don't want to get too close to them all if they ever start getting too close you just click away from the direction they're coming from light up your micro warp drive and you pull range very quickly once you feel safe again you just turn around and start working your way back in towards the objective one of the drones has started taking a little bit of aggro and he's into armor quite quickly he got quite a whack there but uh, he started healing up, so I guess they've dropped aggro. But I do pull them in just so we can heal up. We'll keep the little chap safe. So we're eating our way through these frigates very nicely. Our one salvo per frigate seems to be working very well. There's more frigates in this room. So we have had to reload the missile launchers. But, you know, it's really not a big concern in the running of this site. Keeping an eye on the D-scan, because you can see local is uh, quite busy at the moment. Seen a few ships pass through, but nothing that seems to be coming our way or that appears to be a threat, but you never know. So we'll just keep very alert. We've got one cruiser in this room. There he is, the chief of security. So we'll take him down. He could have some loot, which will leave us with one tower to take down, which hasn't been a pest at all in this room. So it wasn't a priority target. In some rooms, you want to take down the towers very quickly. Pop goes the cruiser at two and a half times speed. And all we've got is the overseer's personal effects, but it's better than nothing, isn't it? So on to the next room. You can always pause here to let your capacitor recharge if you need to, but we're only really using the micro warp drive to get to the gate quicker once we've killed all the rats. So we know we've got plenty of capacitor, but feel free to take a little bit of time don't forget, of course, to make sure your missile launchers are full before you go into the next room. Grab a quick screenshot. Lovely. Obviously, the quicker we can get the site cleared, the quicker we can be safely docked up with the loot. Now, the loot on these sites can, of course, be incredibly variable. So we'll see what we get today. Um, I don't really envy the guys that spend a lot of time in high sec looking for combat sites and escalations, etc. Because there's a lot of competition for them. And the loot drops are so variable. Here in my low sec life, they're just they're part of a balanced diet, really. I've got the belts, the clone soldiers, combat sites as they pop up. We've got stuff to hack. We've got a wormholes to pop into if we're really bored. We can run some abyss. So you're never going to get regular money in low sec unless you happen to be in low sec doing something particularly grindy. Best policy in low sec is to take whatever you can get that might have some isk in it. Which is why having a ship like this Caracal sat in a hangar, fitted with some modules to vary its application a little bit. So I can fit it for hams, I can fit it for rapid lights. But in essence, it's always the same Caracal. It's not fit specifically to do one task. It can complete most tasks I want it to. Perhaps not optimally, but it will get the job done. And I think that's quite important. If I'd gone out to Stackmon to go and get a missile guidance computer and script, that's um, probably 10 minutes by the time I faffed. Would the site even still be here when I get back? Who knows? The cruiser in this room, the refinery headmaster, has dropped us not very much at all. 
a smart bomb, some personal effect and a medium blaster. But as I was saying, um, putting too much time into stressing over the minutiae of your fit, you know, don't let perfect get in the way of good enough. And in busy areas of high sec, you've got the pressure of all those other players looking for the same loot as you. Do you really want to be spending time twiddling your fit for optimal resistance balances or do you want to get out there, start blowing stuff up and grab the loot? It would be incredibly great if the Caracal could fit a core probe launcher and still, still have its full DPS, but it can't. But I mean, one alternative if you did want to roam is you could have the probe scan launcher fitted, scan down some sites. If you see one you want to hit, you quickly dock, switch the probe launcher for a missile launcher and go get the job done. Or you could use a mobile depot to achieve the same result. If I hadn't had the Caracal handy, I would have just run this in a Cormorant or an AV issue Cormorant railguns. Um, any Tech 1 destroyer will get through these sites. You probably have about the same DPS, to be honest. It's not feeling so far that like there's any difference in this run to that there would be in a rail Caracal or Cormorant. I've got completely Tech 1 fit Alpha destroyers through these sites without taking any damage, to be honest with you, if you want to play it really safe. In fact, I think the Catalyst took one hit off the last rat on the site because I hadn't realised it and got through the whole site without even taking any damage. So I spoiled a perfect run through not noticing until I edited the video, because <laughs> I could have easily avoided that one hit if I'd fought to. And if you really want to laugh on one of these sites and you don't feel threatened by somebody interrupting you, go in there with a blaster frigate and have a ball. <laughs> Have some fun on these sites sometimes, don't make it all work. Anyway, we're in the last room and there's a quite a lot of rats in here, but don't worry, it's all just more of the same. The one thing I will say in this room is that take down the towers reasonably quickly because they will keep just applying pesky DPS to you, you don't need to bother about. So take down the towers, control the range and munch your way through these rats. What I do find in this last room is that some of the rats, look that one there has just survived a salvo of missiles with a little bit of health points left. So improve tweaking the application up, maybe dropping the target painter, fitting a guidance computer would improve that situation. But again, it's not really making much difference to this run. Uh, the other thing I do do here, if you have a, if you notice, is I fire a salvo of missiles at a rat. If he's got some hit points left, then I set the drones on him to finish him off. There's no rush because I'm not letting the drones, I'm not letting the rats get close to me. So there's no rush to get their guns off the field like there can be when destroying your rats is destroying the rats and lowering their DPS is basically your tanking technique. Here, there's no pressure. So extra missile here and there really isn't a problem for us and it's the cheap stuff. So not even the so even the bank manager don't mind. We could use Tech 2 Precision Ammo, which probably would be finishing all of these off with one salvo, but it's a bit more expensive. Um, it's a bit more high skill. You could easily be running this with Tech 1 missile launchers and Tech 1 tank. You do not need a Tech 2 fit for this at all. In fact, I have done a video, which I'll link at the end of me doing this in a much lower skill Caracal, and also looking at a couple of variations on the Caracal fit. I'll link that at the end. But um, this is where I am now. And as I say, for low sec, you want to just have a low sec fit that you can apply to various situations. If you feel really safe and secure, then you can be a little bit more specialist. You know, I've got some ships I wouldn't put out into a busy local. I've got others that I'll still go and run the site and not being too worried about getting hunted. But we are so deep into this site now. If anyone wanted to come up to hunt us on this site, we would see them coming a mile off on our D-scan. It's also quite frustrating hunting people through these sites. You get to the room where you've got the choice of gates, um, and even if there's two of you, you might need both of you to actually uh, tackle and DPS the target. So one of you is going to have to walk back round to get in the right room, even if you find the guy. To burn across the rooms quickly gate to gate to catch up with the guy means running down your capacitor, and the last thing you want to do is land in the room where he is, where you want to fight him, and start off with like a third of your cap obviously that's very a little bit depending on your fit but you get what i mean quite often you'll get arrive in the room where he is and he's 40 50 kilometers away which is where we should be by the time we finished all this wiggling because um, i didn't say it at the beginning of this video but i've said it enough i hope don't ever just warp into a room and sit on the warp in point because anyone that joins you will land straight on you never do that no matter what your fit is capable of 
in terms of range or application. Move off the warping. So with no drama, we've worked our way down to the last couple of rats on this site and then we need to take down the supply stronghold, the building. For that I'm going to switch to rage ammo just to do it quicker. It can be a bit dull if you've got low DPS watching this thing go down. But you will get it down eventually. Now I have occasionally found these very sites completely clear of rats but this building's still here. The guy didn't know where the loot was. So he's left the loot there for me and I've had a couple of nice drops actually where I've literally just found the loot. I think one of them was in the video. Here, the range to the target is zero so my missiles are actually exploding pretty much on me. So I'm moving away <laughs> just because of the noise. That wasn't me getting hit by somebody else. I was literally... The game was saying I was at zero inches, literally, from the target. So the moment my missiles were launching, they were detonating. Looked pretty cool, though. How we would usually catch more people running a three out of ten, honestly, is when we go into the room they're on, or they realise we're hunting them, they warp off to a station, they then wait, not very long at all, and come back out to the site. Now, in that intervening time, we might have walked back to the entry gate and just sat there waiting for them to come to us because they've done that. It's very nice of them. You could leave a cloak shipped up by that gate just watching for when they go back in and have a couple of ships to chase them straight into the first room before they even have time to get through the first gate. Catch up with them in there. Or you could just leave your ships sat in the site inside the first gate waiting for them to land on you. And uh, so if you get chased off a site and feel the need to go and dock up guys, don't go back out there in about two or three minutes when the same guys are still in local and their ships are clearly still on your D-scan because they're waiting for you and you will lose your ship. Sadly, we've already had the pop-up notification on this site that it won't escalate any further. So let's see what loot we got. Oh, that's quite handy. We've got all the prop mods. Over 70 mils worth of prop mod. We've got the Corelli A-Type 1MN afterburner and a Corelli A-Type 5MN micro warp drive. So they're worth about 35 mil each. They could be handy to fit on some of our ships at some stage. But there you go. But you are, And you are now witnessing me warping back to the station without looting the wreck. Luckily, these sites are reasonably persistent, guys. You've got plenty of time to reship, go out and salvage them if you want. I don't bother myself. I don't find that revenue stream to be particularly worth the time for me. But feel free to. So I'm just going to... I've already realised by the time I get back. Oops, I didn't click that loop button, did I? So I'm going to just shoot back up to the site and uh, grab the loot. So I'll see you there. So here we are, flying back to the loot box. Just to illustrate the point I was making, from undocking to getting here, has taken over four minutes burning across each room with my micro warp drive. So a hunter would have to do that. So they're going to be on your D-scan for that long till they can catch up with you in this last room. So um, keep yourself safe, and you should be safe. So we've got the loot. We've got the 70-odd million in Gucci prop mods, plus the other little personal effects etc which aren't really much of a contribution on these sites once you've gone to four out of ten sites then the minimal loot is a little bit better i think it's about 45 million from the overseers effect but on these three out of tens it is down to the loot fairy is she going to be nice is she going to be nasty that's it the job is really done now <laughs> i'm back docked with the loot in the suboptimal grab and go caracal before we review before we kind of review the run and look at how you might modify the ship to be more serpentis focused and low sec focused there was one other thing i wanted to point out i went for all or nothing on the grouping of the weapons but you do have options and again with the rapid light missile launchers it's going to be all about management i'm just going to stop my ship so i don't drift out of docking range in case anyone lands here with me <laughs> back to the point you can sub kind of subgroup them. So drag one onto the other, you've got a group of two, and a two, and a one. So if you wanted to get quite twiddly, you could maybe group these with two as a two and a three, because I was one-shotting some of those frigates in the first room with just two launchers on them, with just two missiles. This method may well get through the rats a little bit quicker. The downside is that if you miss any of those, you know, double clicks to fire one round of rockets then you might have more reloads over the course of the site so it may balance out 
So as you get more used to the rapid lights and you've got the time and you feel comfortable and your D-scan's nice and safe for you, then yeah, feel free to group them up how you like to optimize it. Let me know what you found to be best because as I say, I jump in and out of ships and alphas and fits all the time and it's often just on a grab and go basis as it was here. Anyway, let's get redocked. What I have made here is another fit that would really be, especially if you're just in high sec, and well, if you are just in high sec, this would probably be a more optimal fit just to deal with Serpentis rats. We've upped the thermal resistance here by swapping the EM reinforcer for a thermal reinforcer. We've dropped one shield extender rig for a rigger catalyst rig, which is improved application. And I've switched out the target painter, which is great if the site or the situation means you want to, you know, just hit one target or big targets and take them down quickly, or very small targets like towers in wormholes. But the missile guidance computer I've fitted in its place is going to enhance either our application and range, or we can focus it just to application by running it with a script. If we leave it without a script in it, it's going to be enhancing our flight time and our missile velocity, so that's basically range and also the explosion velocity and explosion radius which is application so just with that fitted we've extended our range from 44 to 48 however what we really want to do is run a missile precision script in there and then it is only boosting our application we don't really need any more range 100 percent bonus to explosion radius 100 percent bonus to explosion velocity that will certainly make sure we're one shotting everything on grid with five launchers and it may assist you find a nice balance in grouping them in maybe a two and a three you could put a missile guidance computer down in the bottom slot to enhance application but you're basically going to have to replace one of the ballistic control systems and drop dps so it's much better to do that in the mid slot or a rig than it is to reduce your dps you could of course drop the damage control instead of a ballistic control system if you're happy with less tank i'll leave it up to you and that's your own peril but if you've got as much leeway as i had on that run and you weren't worried about getting jumps yeah you probably could to be honest and there wasn't really any point in adding a rig in here to boost missile damage any further because then it would have stacked with the ballistic control systems so it's much better to boost the application there as well so that's the high sec option let me know if you give that a go out there but i wouldn't bring that to low sec just in case you run into anything that isn't a serpentis rat basically anyway my friends that's it for now i hope you found this useful and interesting leave me some comments down below with your in-game name to be in with a chance of a creator skin Subscribe if you'd like to stay in touch and click the notification bell to know when the next video is out. I'm aiming to do at least one a week. It won't always be on the same day in a week, but for now at least one a week just to satisfy me, let alone you. And of course, leave the video a like if you have enjoyed it. But for now, my friends, remember, take care of yourselves and each other. Remember, even is believing, fly brave and goodbye.